What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So the rich are getting richer. We have been seeing Democrats fight to tell the rich you have to pay your fair share in taxes. Yet, now Democrats are coming back saying no, we need to give you this because it's gonna help. Well, I wanna bring, bring this to your attention because this is major news and it's coming down to what we are gonna see in this upcoming $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill. Got some news on the $1.2 trillion bill as well. We're gonna talk about the SALT tax deduction and I want to give you an update on the stimulus package. But first, before I do that, if you enjoy these daily uploads, can you do me a favor? Go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help out the channel. Let's get into the update. Things are crazy right now. The Biden administration has been saying, progressives as well, have been saying the rich need to pay their fair share in taxes. However, that's not essentially what's gonna happen. Under the $3.5 trillion infrastructure package, we are supposed to see the rich, anybody that makes over $5 million per year, whether it's a person or a business, has to pay an increased tax. However, we are gonna see something come back which is actually gonna give these people a little bit of a deduction. They're gonna get some money back. Well, here's what we know. The Democrats are trying to increase the taxes on people making over $5 million per year. They wanted to increase capital gains tax from 20% up to 25. They also wanted to increase the corporate tax rate from 21% up to 26.5%. That's how it currently stands. All these things sound in line with what exactly Democrats have been wanting all along. But here's the problem. Now Democrats are saying that we need to get the SALT tax deduction put back into place. It needs to be reinstated the way it was before former President Donald Trump took office. And according to Bloomberg, if this happens, if the deduction were fully reinstated, then the top 1% or those earning more than $401,600 or $401, per year would actually face a tax increase of less than 50% as large as what Democrats have originally proposed. In some cases, people would actually see their after-tax income fall just 1.9%. 1.9%. That's not much. And for those that are in the top 5%, making between $165,000 and $401,600, they would see a 0.9% increase in their after-tax income. Yeah, 0.9% <laughs> increase. This is what I'm saying. Right now, Democrats are saying the rich have to pay their fair share in taxes, yet they're gonna give them a salt tax deduction? They're gonna give a salt tax deduction, which mainly just helps the rich. This is who it's affecting. Really the salt tax deduction, okay? The state and local tax deduction, that's what the salt tax means. This is, all it essentially means is if you pay state, if you pay state taxes, let's say in New York or California, let's say, um, just for simple math, let's say you make a million dollars and you pay $100,000 in, in state and local taxes. Well, for your federal income tax, you could actually deduct that $100,000. So technically, you only made $900,000, not 1 million, so it can save you money. Well, this is how the rich are gonna save some money because this will be included. Some are saying no salt tax, no deal. Multiple, multiple lawmakers Multiple Democrats are saying no salt tax deduction, no deal. Reports indicate it is because of this, okay? It's because of this that some of these, uh, the provisions within the $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill are being held up. Right now, reports indicate that too many lobbyists have pushed for the salt tax deductions to be restored, and being that many lawmakers are given donations for their campaigns from these people and businesses, they're going to do whatever it takes in order to satisfy their friends. That's an issue. But this is exactly how Congress works. This is how our government works. They will pretty much cave to whoever's gonna give them the biggest donations. And that's an issue. Right now, what I can tell you is there's a lot of issues happening. We know Congress can't agree on this $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill. That's a problem. We know the government right now is at risk of defaulting on their, on their debts. Just today, the White House warns us that there will be major cuts to Medicaid, school lunches, disaster relief programs, and much more if the government can't increase their debt limit. So Democrats right now are saying, hey, 
the Republicans are to blame because they are not allowing us and voting with us to increase our debt limit. So let's blame them for school lunches and missing out on school lunches, uh, more disaster relief, right? Medicaid, cuts to Medicaid. It's gonna be big. Republicans, Democrats, they plan to vote. Hey, they plan to vote on, or Democrats really want to vote on this uh, debt, debt limit increase. However, Republicans are not going to vote with them. They have stated they will not go with them and help them go further and further into debt. That if they want to go deeper into debt and possibly cause additional inflation, it's going to be on them. Republicans will have nothing to do with this. Republicans and Democrats are also planning to vote on this $1.2 trillion bill as soon as possible. However, right now, what we are hearing is that Nancy Pelosi, she has stated that she is going to have a vote by September 27th. That was her promise. That was her promise to moderates. That was the reason why they passed the bill. Here's the issue. The issue right now is Republicans do not want to wait another what, 10 days in order to vote on this bill. Democrats are tired of waiting and are tired that Nancy Pelosi is actually holding this bill hostage and just delaying this in order to get the $3.5 trillion stimulus package through. And so progressives, they say that they may vote against this bill as well because moderates are not going to support them in their, their plan to get the $3.5 trillion bill passed through either. And again, all this stuff isn't going to happen in 10 days. And that's where many lawmakers say they're skeptical we're going to see a deal and this could be pushed deep into October, not the end of September. So it's going to be interesting where we go from there. But what I can tell you, we are going to have a deal at some point. Just depends how big the deal is, how much is going to be in it, if there's going to be anything in there for the American people, or will this just be pure infrastructure? Right now, it's really up in the air as to what passes. Here's something else that's happening today. In immigration news, there are more than 12,000 migrants, mostly from Haiti, that are waiting to be processed by the, by the Border Patrol down in Texas. Even Representative Kevin McCarthy, he is calling on President Biden to, to, to go and deploy the National Guard as, as pressure is building uh, at the border. And currently lawmakers are saying that we can't bring in more people into the country because it would be a security risk. And even they're trying to say right now the border is out of control. But here's what I'm here to tell you. The border isn't out of control today. The border has been out of control for months. So all the news saying, oh, things are getting horrible. There is, there's just crisis down at the border. We've had a crisis. It's nothing new. The only thing that's new is the media is now covering the border, the Mexican-American border, not Afghanistan anymore. That's where things are changing. Really, this whole crisis has been going on for months. And experts also say that it makes absolutely no sense why the Biden administration is mandating vaccines for the American people that are working, yet they are not uh, going to uh, require mandates for migrants to come into the United States and not get a vaccine. They, they say it is acceptable to mandate it for an American citizen, but they, they're not going to do that for migrants that are coming in. And this is where some say they're thinking backwards. This is also one of the reasons why 24 uh, attorney generals from or 24 states are actually going to sue the Biden administration saying that this is unlawful and this is not the right way to go. In vaccine news, I mentioned this earlier on today. The FDA was going to have a meeting at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They had that meeting. The committee got together. And now the FDA says that they are recommending the Pfizer booster shot to people 65 years of age and older or anybody that is high risk. The committee today also rejected booster shots to most adults and any children 16 years of age or older. They say right now there's not enough data to support uh, the safety of this or the efficacy of the booster shot or booster dose just yet. They're still looking into this and they will come back later on. So as of right now, it looks like the Biden administration is not going to get their wish to administer booster shots to every single American by Monday. It will just be anybody 65 years of age or older and those that are high risk. So we'll see what happens there. What I can tell you is that there's still more, uh, more lawmakers pushing for additional stimulus. And it's not just a stimulus check. And I mentioned this earlier. There was a, an economist that's talking about a uh, pretty much an inflation check. 
If you didn't get a chance to go and watch that video, it's the last one I did, I'd recommend you go and watch it, give you an idea of what they're looking into. And right now, lawmakers are trying to find a roundabout way to get additional stimulus to the American people. And they're gonna do whatever they can to get it. So we're gonna see what happens, but as I know more, I promise I'll come back on here and share more. Just wanna thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday. If you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor, go ahead, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.